So this is part two of the EIGIP video, a configuration for um, manipulating the metric values in order to see about how feasible successors and successor routes work in the EIGRP topology table and the IP route. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And we're, what we're going to do is go ahead and configure a offset list because that's the recommended uh, way uh, if we're going to change any of the metric values, quote unquote, in order to have a feasible uh, route or feasible successor route show up um, in our domain. So let's go ahead and configure that. Um, I turned off the variance because um, I wanted to be able to do it again if we if we had to. Uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create an access list. And that access list is going to um, take the routes that we want, uh, which is the 10 segment routes, and it's going to be able to offset those or increment that value up uh, by an amount that we want um, or don't want. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, configure that access list now. So in a global command, we hit access list, we're going to hit one a permit, and we're going to go ahead and permit our 10 subnet and we're going to go ahead and do a wildcard mask that's going to go ahead and fulfill our uh, our subnet requirements. Uh, we have 10 subnets here so we're going to go ahead and uh, do a 15.255 for our wildcard mask in order to encompass all that. Um, again if you had uh, those extra subnets used here then uh, you're going to have to get really uh, more specific about your um, your setup when it comes to configuring this. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit enter there. And we can go ahead and go into our router configuration for a router ERGRP. We do an offset list uh, one. And we're going to go ahead and have it coming in. And we're going to do an offset of, let's say, 65. Okay, 6,500,000. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase the metric value. Uh, after the metric value has been determined, it's going to offset it. Uh, it's going to it's going to append this amount um, to the value so that on fast Ethernet uh, zero zero, it's going to have a similar or a closer uh, cost value as it uh, as the route coming through serial interface. Uh, zero zero and we're going to go ahead and do uh, fast ethernet zero zero so on fast ethernet zero zero our metric value which was this 409,600 will be incremented by this six million um, number here and what that will do is give us a number that's closer to that value that was I think it was two million three hundred thousand or something um, Actually, no, I'm sorry. That was the administrative cost. Let's just go ahead and take a look. Uh, ERGP topology. So as you can see, uh, immediately our value is enough to get us to uh, become a, a feasible successor. Um, our serial interface is actually faster, or it has a better uh, value in terms of its feasible distance now. Uh, I added probably too much. <laughs> As you can see, uh, yeah, it was 2,300,000. I mean, I've added 6 million, so obviously that was too much. Uh, let me go ahead and just make a quick change to have it be a lot closer. I mean, if for no other reason than because I want to. Okay. Let's do no. What's the problem? No offset list. One in. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong area. Dough. Okay. And we can go ahead and offset list. We can go ahead and change this to, uh, I think it was 22. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so what we're going to do is let this go ahead and sync up and get the new values coming in, and then we'll go ahead and be able to see uh, if we have a feasible successor now. There we go. And I, uh, it's a lot better looking, you know. It's like you, you can actually compare these a lot easier. You know, you want them to be closer because, you know, um, 
especially if you're going to do like co uh, low uh, sharing and stuff like that. Um, it just makes um, the demonstration purposes a lot easier. So again, uh, what determines our successor route is the feasible distance to that uh, location. So here, uh, the serial interface is still considered the successor route. Why? Because the feasible distance is 2,323,000 and the fast Ethernet feasible distance is the 2,600,000. Uh, so if we wanted to make sure that the fast Ethernet segment would still be considered um, the successor route, then we would just change our offset list. We can... Uh, uh, sub, we can you know subtract like you know uh, extra three million off um, three million five hundred off well four million off in order to actually have that be the case. So uh, again, let's go ahead and do that just for the purposes. I mean, it's a fast Ethernet segment. It's faster. You want it to be used more. So let's go ahead and set that. So I went ahead and uh, increased it by 1,800,000, I believe at first it was 600,000. So what we should have here is one that keeps us right um, around where we were for the successor route. Okay. So yeah, there we go. Our fast ethernet link is the successor route. The feasible distance is the best to get to that location. Our serial interface uh, has a feasible, I mean, administrative distance that's less than the feasible distance. So it's going to be able to route packets as well. Um, again, if the interface goes down, it's going to immediately get put into the RIB and packets will be able to get routed. I turned off the variance and that's why it doesn't show up in the show IP route. But these are our feasible successors. They meet the requirement to be feasible successors. Their administrative distance is smaller than the feasible distance of the successor routes. So again, if I do show IP route, you'll see that the fast ethernet uh, segment is our preferred segment and if I was to go ahead and since these paths aren't equal the fast Ethernet segment is a little bit faster than the serial uh, determined by our offset list let's go ahead and configure a slight variance so that in our routing uh, information uh, we want to be able to see that we have a successor route and there you go. Our successor routes are now, our feasible successor routes are now also being used to uh, transit packets to that to those networks. So, like 10.0.10.0 packets will be sent uh, across both links. Um, we can take a look at the rate at which um, they're going to uh, share. So our asterisk again shows us that 10.10.11.2 is our preferred uh, route to get there. Our route right right now, our traffic share count is 20 on this route, where it's 19 on our serial interface. And they they, they have uh, I mean their their metrics aren't that uh, far apart. So you're going to have a lot closer uh, sharing there. But you can also set um, uh, the sharing uh, between those two and you can make it so fast Ethernet does a little bit more or serial interface does a little bit more it depends on you so that's how you would set an offset list in order to make sure that the um, the feasible successor can show up when it comes to these particular routes um, it's still learning about uh, its routes its normal way it's not incrementing the values for 172.16.10.0 because uh, over here uh, the fast Ethernet segments are faster. <laughs> um, even though router one and router two have a direct connection, and 
uh, 172.16.10.0 isn't going to go over this slow connection um, when it can go through the fast Ethernet uh, and get there. Even though it takes two uh, links, uh, it's still faster than the serial interface. So we can actually set up an access list to make that uh, take uh, the serial interface. Or we can set up a, like a, a route map and, and, and do it that way. And that's that's the good thing about, you know, this stuff is that you can, um, you know, you can do a whole bunch of things. So um, let's go and um, set that up real quick. So uh, two, and we're going to do permit. 172.16.10.0 and 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 enter and go to a router EIGRP2 and we're going to do an offset list to and and we're going to do hmm, what do we have here? We have 172.16.10.332.800. So let's just put in some outrageous number because we don't want it using Fast Ethernet 0, 0. We want it to go across the slow, slow serial interface link. So I'm just going to put in one and like eight zeros and let's do Fast Ethernet uh, 0, 0 and hit enter there. And this is just so we, we should be able to see that router interface uh, that uh, 172.16.10.0 should take the serial interface instead of that fast Ethernet one because we are we 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 offset and increase the cost uh, after the metric is determined to make that metric and that path look not as attractive as the serial interface one. So let's go ahead and do show IP route. And here's our 172.16.10. And we incremented the value so much that uh, the serial interface is now the route um, that will be taken to uh, distribute packets to that segment now. Even though the fast Ethernet segment is faster, uh, it's going to use the serial interface because we set an offset list to make that route appear to be um, not as uh, attractive as the route that it was taken before. So that was a little bit about the offset list. Obviously, you would do a lot more granular and a lot more, you know, uh, attractive um, configurations like this when you're using route maps. And we're going to look at that in um, an upcoming video. But this was just ERGRP. We're doing basic ERGRP stuff here. So this is what we're using with ERGRP, the offset list. So hopefully, you know, um, I explained this okay, and you guys, you were able to follow me along. Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, um, you guys um, weren't confused by my rambling. Uh, see you guys soon. Thanks.